My guest right now is two for two. Two seasons behind the Penguins bench and two Stanley Cups. Now he's hoping to make it three for three. He is Penguins coach Mike Sullivan. Uh, coach, like I said, you're going for three in a row. Is there more pressure because you're chasing history or less pressure because you guys have already won twice in a row? Well, I don't know if I look at it either way, Mark. I just think it's a great opportunity for us. We know how hard it is to win championships. Uh, this is certainly, the hard, we think, the hardest trophy in sports to win, but certainly it's a great opportunity for us, and that's the way we look at it. We've got a great group of players in front of us. We just have a great core here that uh, is so talented and, and so competitive, and, and, and we think we have what it takes to uh, to win, and that's the way we look at it. We We understand that it's going to be difficult. We know what the challenge is. Uh, but certainly we're excited about the opportunity in front of us. Well, not only talented, but experienced. And really, that might be your biggest advantage going into these playoffs is the experience, right? Well, I would think it would serve us well because we have a we have a lot of experience to draw on, you know. And uh, when you look at the last couple of Stanley Cup runs that this core group of players have has gone through, there's been a lot of challenges. There's been ups and downs. And, uh, you know, I think we all look back after after you win and, and it, it, it's easy to forget how difficult it was with some of the challenges that, that as a group and as a team that we had to overcome. But, but certainly I think that the, the experience of going through those two runs uh, certainly gives us plenty of experience to draw on uh, with any of the potential challenges we may face moving forward. What's the fatigue factor like after 295 games dating back to October of 26 teams? It seems like you guys might still have an extra gear. I think we do. You know, these these guys are physically fit guys. You know, they take care of themselves. Uh, I think we have a strength and conditioning staff that that is the best in the league as far as preparing our guys physically, uh, so that so that we're prepared to play. But but I give our players so much credit for the work and the dedication that they put in to be a, to, to be a, as fit as they can possibly be. And 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 so you know, I, this coaching staff has never used uh, fatigue as as any sort of an issue or or an excuse. We, we believe in this group of players. We, we know it's hard to win, uh, but certainly we believe we have what it takes. Every coach switches lines a lot. That's the way the league is now. But you seem to know when to do it. What's your feel for that? Where does that feel come from, and uh, what are the factors you, you take into consideration? Well, Mark, I, I always think there's, there's a fine line between, uh, between moving personnel around, moving line combinations or defense pairs, and uh, and leaving things and allowing players or, or lines or defense players to play through stuff. And, uh, and, and, and I believe it's, uh, it's really a, a lot of times it's, it's a gut feeling. It's, it's a coaching staff as a group. Uh, the, the whole gut feeling of the staff on, on whether we think we need to make a, a tweak or an adjustment to try to be proactive to affect some change, uh, because we feel as though the team needs it at a particular time. In the season, you know, we tried to settle in and have some consistency with our lines here over the last over the last month or so. Uh, but but certainly, uh, we don't know what's going to happen happen moving forward. And uh, a, a lot of times, it all depends on, on how our team is playing at the time, what what our injury status looks like, and who's playing well and who isn't, and and whether or not we think we need to tweak something to affect a little bit of positive change for our team and. And I think that's the art of coaching. It's not necessarily the science. It's it's more the art of coaching, and a lot of it uh, comes down to gut instinct. You have Sid and Gino. No other team has Sid and Gino. All the advanced metrics duly noted. Isn't that the Penguins' biggest edge? I think so. I you know when, when you look at uh, the strength we have uh, at the center ice position, you know there aren't too many teams in the league that can. That can roll over the boards uh, a Crosby and a Malkin in, in the. Uh, if you want to say it's a one-two punch, uh, we look at it as a one and one a. These guys are both uh, terrific players. They're both elite players. Uh, they're both generational players, and they're both accomplished players uh, in their own right. And so uh, these guys are always at the center of the success that the Penguins have enjoyed over the last decade plus, and. Uh, and it certainly gives us, I think, a competitive advantage to have these two players uh, on our on our roster. We're, we we don't take them for granted, Mark. Our coaching staff. Uh, sometimes we marvel at, at what they're able to accomplish on on a given night. Uh, they're they're just elite players. They're terrific players. 
uh, and we think it gives us a competitive advantage. In 2012, the Flyers made the Penguins blow up mentally and emotionally in that playoff series. Now, I don't see a connection six years later, but how do you keep a team from getting under your skin over the course of seven games? Well, I just think we, we've got to make sure that we control our emotions and, and, and we play the game the right way so it gives us the best chance to win, regardless of who our opponent is. And, uh, you know, we, we've gone through uh, two playoff runs the last two years where uh, there's been a lot of emotion on both sides, and there have been teams that have tried to uh, try to get under our skin and get us off our game. And that's, that, that's part of the, the, the strategy or the tactics that, that teams use to try to, uh, to, to try to beat us. So I think our team has plenty of experience in, in dealing with uh, that type of a circumstance. Uh, that may arise, but uh, I, I just think we have to control what we can. And, uh, and, and it starts with our own emotional engagement. You know, and, and we have to be emotional because I think that's an important aspect of our, our overall team game and us being at our best. It's just we've got to make sure that we channel our emotions the right way. Do the Flyers play like the Penguins? Is the style similar? Because they've certainly got a lot of firepower up front, and they like to attack, don't they? They do. I, I think I think they're a very similar style of play than what than what we play. You know, they're they're a team that likes to stretch the ice. They're a team that's pretty good uh, within transition. They're a team that uh, gets their defensemen involved and they're very active in the uh, in the rush and and off the offensive blue line. So. Uh, you know, I, I think they, they're they playing a similar style of play that, that we're trying to play here in Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, this is a real good team that we're playing. They, they've got they've got a lot of firepower. Uh, their power play is dangerous. I think their, their defensemen are very active and very involved in the offense, both off the rush and in the offensive zone. And, and you know, we understand that it's going to be a big challenge. We're talking to Penguins coach Mike Sullivan here on the home of the Penguins, 105.9. Uh, like I mentioned, Coach, you've been here three seasons. What's your take on the Pittsburgh-Philadelphia rivalry, especially compared to some of the others you've experienced, uh, whether as a player or coach? Well, I think it, it's probably one of the more emotional rivalries in sports, uh, certainly in hockey, for that matter. You know, when I was uh, when I was coaching uh, the Bruins, I was involved with uh, the Bruins-Montreal rivalry, and that's a heated rivalry. Uh, as well, when I was with the Rangers, there was the Rangers Islanders rivalry. That was a that was a pretty emotional uh, rivalry. So uh, there are a handful of them around the league, Mark. Uh, but certainly, I think uh, the Pittsburgh Philadelphia rivalry is 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 one that has to be uh, ranked right up there as one of the biggest rivalries in hockey. It's, you know, they're two organizations that are proud organizations. They have strong histories. Uh, I think the fact that both teams are as competitive as they are at this particular point in time certainly elevates the emotion around the games involved, and, and these are the most fun to be a part of. Uh, you know that that's been my experience of being associated with rivalries of this type uh, in the in the past. So I know our, play, our players are real excited to get to get it going here. Uh, we understand that it's going to be a hard fought series. This is going to be a tough challenge, but we're looking forward to the opportunity. What needs to get better on the PK, Coach? Because statistically, that's the one weak link. Yeah, I, I think when you look at our penalty kill over the last five or six weeks, we think we've done a lot of really good things. Uh, what, I, in, in my opinion, Mark, what, what we have to avoid is is the, the, the real catastrophic breakdown uh, that gives the, the, the grade AA chance. And uh, when you look at some of the, the games, or the last ten or twelve games, for example, that we played during the regular season, we didn't we didn't really give up a ton of chances off on on the penalty kill, but the ones we gave up were very high quality. And and so if we can make sure that uh, that we have support mechanisms built in place where they're supposed to be, and we have cooperative effort and cooperative pressure in the certain areas of the rink where we're trying to pressure people and pressure the puck. Uh, then I think we, if we can limit the, the, the real high, high quality chance, uh, I, I think our penalty kill has what it takes to get it done for us. I don't even know what to ask about the power play. Number one in the league, best in franchise history. I've never seen a power play so patient, Coach. I'm up in the press box. I'm almost yelling under my breath, shoot, shoot, and then they make two more passes and the puck winds up in the net. Uh, do you secretly want them to shoot more and, and do the same thing I do? Well, I will say this is that 
when we when we do struggle as a group, that's one of the things that the coaching staff tries to reiterate to these guys is, hey, let's simplify it, let's simplify it a bit, and let's shoot the puck, and maybe we can create some offense off of the rebound, or or maybe in fact the, the original shot might go in the net. And so uh, that is something that we do talk to them about on occasion. You know, I've said this uh, quite often that you know when we deal with this particular group of players on our power play. I think as a coaching staff, we have to be careful we don't overcoach them because we believe that, you know, these guys are elite players. They, they think the game on a certain level. They see the game on a certain level. That separates them from others, and we don't want to get in the way of that. So, you know, we, we give them a framework so that they can be predictable for one another. They certainly have a team concept out there in, in areas of the game where, where they're looking to try to exploit based on our pre-scouts of our opponents. But I think what separates our power play from others is their instinctive play. And uh, and we're always cautious as a coaching staff that we don't get in the way of that. Matt Murray had kind of a checkered season, but by his own admission, he's never been a stats goalie, has he? No, he hasn't. I, I think the, the thing that jumps out at me when, when uh, people ask me about Matt is is he's a, he's a gamer. He's a guy that, that plays well uh, when the stakes are high. At least he says... He's got plenty of evidence to uh, to back that up over his first couple of seasons in the NHL. You know, I think we all forget how young he is because he's he's accomplished so much in in his short career to this point. But uh, listen, Matt's a real good goalie. We know that. We believe in him. You know, he's had uh, a, a little bit of a of a roller coaster when it comes to the up and the, the numbers standpoint uh, from playing goal. But when you look at some of the games that we needed to win this year. He was there to make the timely save for us, and and that's the type of goalie that he is. And I I believe that's why he's as accomplished as he is to this particular point. Where's the defense at right now? Does the depth concern you at all? Uh, I'm not talking quality, coach. I'm talking numbers because last year you had eight or nine guys that were NHL guys. This year you got seven. Yeah, well, I I think we have more than seven, Mark. But they're they're just not uh, they're they're not as many names that that people may be familiar with because they, they haven't played as many games here in, in Pittsburgh. But we believe we've got a real strong defense core that's played in Wilkesbury all year uh, that will give us the, the depth that we need if, if, if and when that, that, uh, uh, that, that time comes. But, but certainly when you look at the, the group that we have going into the playoffs this year versus the group that we have, have going into the playoffs last year, we didn't have Chris Letang, and we believe Chris Letang is a difference maker. And so... Uh, I believe that, that we have what it takes. We certainly have uh, sufficient guys that, that, that we believe can get the job done. Um, you know, as, as I've said on a, on a number of occasions in the past couple of seasons, that, uh, you know, we, we have a bit of a motley crew when you look at our defense core. They're, uh, but, but they're extremely competitive guys, and they get the job done. They're a simple group. You know, I think, I think Tanger bring, brings a certain dimension uh, to our defense core that, uh, that, that we don't have when he's not part of our lineup. Uh, but the rest of the guys, they just find ways to get it done. And, and that's what, that's what we love about them. Uh, they compete. Uh, we certainly make our mistakes like every other defense core in the league. Uh, but, but they move by them. They compete for one another. They work for one another. And, and I think that's, that's what makes this particular group of defensemen what they are. And that's what we love about them as, the, as their coaches. Broussard practiced again today. Does he look pretty good for tomorrow night? He said real, two real strong practices, so we're really encouraged. We'll see how he responds overnight here, but uh, but certainly we're really encouraged that uh, that he's a guy that that we think we're going to be able to utilize here. Now, two years ago in the playoffs, Nick Benino kind of produced big numbers out of nowhere. Last year it was Gensel. Who could be a guy like that this year, Coach? Who, who's kind of playing below the radar and below what he could produce? I think we've got a number of guys, you know, that that uh, that can help in that in that capacity. You know, I I think Brian Rust is a guy that that's always been uh, so good for us uh, in in our playoff runs. That uh, that's a guy that I think plays plays at his best when the stakes are high. You know, I think Jake uh, the the last handful of games, his game is really starting to take uh, the form that 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 we all expect when Jake's at his best. You know, he's another guy that tends to be a streaky guy and can really get on a run when things are going well for him.